I'm Wendy Whitman. I'm a private detective, and this is the case of A Star is Dead. It's a story of murder, secrets, and selfishness, based on the best-selling children's book of the same name. In September of last year, there was a homicide. The victim's name was Beth Underwood. She was a social butterfly and was an actress known for getting great roles like Tree Number no. 4 in My Fair Lady and The Piano in Casablanca. Some of Beth's hobbies include reading books, writing books, and booking vacations for her books. The usual. The detective in charge of the case was a rookie named Joel Baker. Nice guy, good upbringing, brother killed by the mob. The usual. I had just gotten back into town from another case and decided to pay a visit to see what was going on. That can't be her, can it? Yeah, that's her. She's got this case, we're out of a job. What's the story here, detective? No, no. <sighs> Haven't quite figured it out yet. Oh dear, Wendy Whitman. Haven't seen you in a good old day. What brings you back to the States? I heard about this story. Decided to walk over. What's going on? Ah, uh, well, I got murdered. Uh, in every way possible that you can think of. Stabbed, shot, uh, decapitated, drowned. Yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. And you're sure it wasn't suicide? No, we haven't ruled that one out yet. Who were the last ones to see the victim? Uh, the director, Larry Serge, uh, his assistant, Monica Bailey, and then lead actor, Mac Powers. All right, thank you. Mr. Serge, Miss Bailey, Mr. Powers? OMG, it's Detective Wendy Whitman herself. I've been such a big fan of yours ever since you solved the case of the hamsters that got on the jetpacks one day and decided to rob Wisconsin of all of its cheese to build a tower to blow up the sun. One of my personal favorites, BT Dubs. Uh, can I have an autograph? Larry, please, chill. I'm sorry about that. Our director can be a little bit obnoxious sometimes. He doesn't get to meet celebrities that often, and he gets pretty excited. I'm flattered, but perhaps another time. Let's stick to the topic at hand. What can you tell me about the victim, Beth Underwood? Well, she's dead. Before that. Well, she wasn't the best actress, but dang, she had a gorgeous face. If her acting had improved, she could have starred in my next magnum opus, The Last Revenge 2. Well, I'm sure any actress would jump at the chance to be on one of your popular online videos, Mr. Powers. Popularity doesn't even begin to describe my status among the other content creators. Through much research, vigorous training, and testing every possible solution, I will do whatever it takes to achieve my perfect movie. And you will remember my name! So, what was the last thing that happened before her death? We were right in the middle of a break. We went to go check on some stuff and got a little bit weird. Her face was like that of a goddess! <laughs> if you ask me, she wasn't that special, okay? I could think of at least one other person who could have played her part a little bit better than she could. Oh, really? Who do you think? Uh, me? I've been studying acting for years. Like, everything in the performing arts, whether it be the stage that, or in front of the camera. I think I've got it. Thank you for your time. Get anything? So far, those three seem innocent. What about you? Uh, well, we found her phone. Uh, last number dialed was Thomas Lynn. Record shows he lives in 1992 Frank Street. Hey, this is my case too. I think you better get a new one. It was at this moment that I discovered I had terrible people skills. After driving through stock video of this nameless city, I arrived at Thomas Lynn's apartment. Please, please, I just want to be left alone. I'm sorry for bothering you at a time like this, Mr. Lin. I would have come sooner, but your girlfriend wasn't dead then. Beth was such a great girlfriend. Who could have done something like this? The killer, most likely. Was there anything Beth said to you before she died? I don't, I don't quite remember. But it was something along the lines of, Please! Please don't kill me! I'm too beautiful! And then, Detective, 
Detective, are you are you okay? Huh? Oh, yes. Everything's gonna be okay, Mr. Lin. I won't stop until the culprit is caught. That's that's good and all, but what about the killer? I just miss her beautiful face. You know, I think I know someone who can help. He knows every beautiful face in town. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to get a drink. Well, if it isn't the darling detective herself. What's the word on the street, Shark? I hear a lot of things. Pick a topic. What do you know about Beth Underwood? What about her? She's nothing special. Nothing special. Come on, Shark. Then what are you coming to me for? Sounds like you know everything there is to know about her already. Well, she was murdered on the scene of a student film today. You're barking up the wrong tree this time, Wendy. Why is that? Even if I knew something, I could be hunted down, strung up, and suffer the cruelest punishment no man should ever have to go through. The last thing I want is to put you into that kind of danger. Word on the street is that the director may have something on Beth. Some say incriminating photos, others say questionable videotapes. Thanks, Shark. Anytime, beautiful. Hey, Shark, it's Benny's birthday today. You think you could, uh... I gotcha. Is it someone's birthday? I knew Serge was hiding something, but if I was going to oust him as a blackmailer, I figured I'd have to play on his level. Besides, I still owe him a visit and an autograph. There was something else I wanted to ask you, Mr. Serge. Oh, yes, what is that? Just some rumors I wanted to put to rest. Something having to do with you blackmailing Beth Underwood? Well, uh, of course they're not true. <laughs> Why would you ever think that? Well, how do you explain this? <laughs> what, what's that? Just something I found. You know, blackmail is a serious offense, Larry. You can either tell me what you've got on Beth- Stop, stop, oh, all right, you got me. That's better. This is why blackmail is wrong. All I wanted was to have her gorgeous face in my movies and no one else's. Hmm. I'd hardly recognize her. All right, Serge, time to take you down to the station. Wait, wait, I didn't kill her. It was somebody else, I swear. That's not polite. Besides, you're being arrested for blackmail. With Serge in custody, I thought this was the end of it. But something about this case started to bug me. After driving through the desert, the Coliseum, and Big Ben, I decided to pull over and go through Serge's briefcase. Conveniently, I ended up back at the crime scene. What are you doing here, Detective? Well, the plaid demands it. Anyway, good job catching the blackmailer today. Huh? Oh. Wendy. Wendy. What? Why'd you take the case, Wendy? What do you mean? No offense, but you normally take on the bigger cases anyways. Ones that take you to exotic places. Like, uh, Bangkok, Madagascar, the moon, uh, Cleveland. Why this one? It's just something personal. Try me. Well, it happened last summer. My partner, John Neal, and I were enjoying a fantastic dinner at the deep end. He went to get the car, but then... I lost him that day. And now that his murder is back, I won't rest until he's brought to justice. Wendy, I'm, I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. And I, I promise you, we will finish this. It's okay. I was just looking to see if anything popped out at me. Oh, well, I guess he did finish the script. Hmm? I know who did it. Director decided to go ahead and get himself arrested. We're Nothing going will stop me, my love. No, wait. No, wait. Nothing will stop me, my love. Hold it right there. 
Oh, detective. Is there something we can help you with? I'm here to arrest the true culprit behind this case. And who would that be? The true culprit behind this case is you. What? Really, detective? How do you figure it was I who murdered my co-star? The only reason she was even here was because Larry was blackmailing her. He was going to force her into the script whether you wanted it or not. And having gotten fed up with her continuously messing up her lines, you did what you do best. Overkill. This climax scene in The Last Revenge 2 has a death just like Beth's. And I'm sure if we watch the first Last Revenge, we'll see another death just like it. When you had to make sure it would work. When you killed John Neal. <laughs> what an amazing story, detective. I, uh, I'm sure you have some sort of evidence to back up your claims. My evidence comes from a very reliable source. Oh yeah? And who's that? You. You gave it all away. <laughs> How so, detective? You gave it away when you said, I will do whatever it takes to create my perfect movie, as well as testing every possibility. Monica can verify me. Oh, yeah, I, I guess he did say that. End of the road, Max. This story is over. Not yet. Did you expect this twist, detective? I expected as much from you, Max. End of the road. I don't think so, copper. Time for the last shot. Your part's been cut, Max. Oscar. Well, that's another one behind bars. Good job, Wendy. Now John and Beth can rest in peace. Thanks. This one wasn't easy. Had me on the ropes a few times. So, uh, what now? Well, I might have another case, and I might need a partner. Or we could go see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys, um, this is great, but uh, it's, it's, it's not my birthday. <laughs>